I made a confession to my roommate, Kelly. Well, to her and to myself. You see, I told her that I wanted to be a writer, but I was majoring in accounting because I needed to be able to get a job when I got out of school. So I stayed the course, completed the degree, and went out into the workforce. And while I enjoyed the stability that accounting brought me, I just continued to feel that there was something else that I should be doing. And that feeling came to a head in the late 90s when I was working as a staff accountant at an advertising agency. And my cubicle was sandwiched in between the art department and the copywriters. And somehow, some of their creative energy must have rubbed off on me because I decided that I wanted to try to write a book. And my book was going to be uh, a coming of age story from the perspective of a first generation Caribbean American. It was something I hadn't seen done yet. And so I managed to write three chapters. And I had some of my coworkers who were writers read what I had written. And they all said, hmm, it's engaging. They enjoyed reading it. It was well written. And I thought, wow. Maybe I'm on to something. I also told my then husband that I was working on this book, but I wasn't ready to show it to him yet. Well, one evening I came home and he had gone through my papers, found my three chapters, and read them. And I was stunned <laughs> by the invasion of privacy but I was even more stunned by his matter of fact demeanor. And then he uh, offered up his unsolicited critique. <laughs> and he said to me, oh, you know, the section where the teenage girls talk about their experiences with boys, I mean, that just seemed inappropriate to me. I don't know why you even want to write that. <laughs> and I was dumbfounded. I I couldn't even answer him. Oh, and he also said that he knew then he understood why I had been hiding it from him. So um, dumbfounded, I didn't say anything, and uh, we had it even been married that long, and I said to myself, how did I manage to marry this self-righteous um, Puritan? But uh, at that time in my life, uh, the success or the continuity of my marriage was really important to me. And so I was determined to continue to bend uh, just shy of breaking in order for my marriage to survive. And so I buried my book idea and the desire to write and just moved on. In May 2007, I lost my beloved father to an unexpected heart attack. And his loss left a hole in our hearts and a chasm in our family. You see, he had been the primary caregiver to my mother who has Alzheimer's and my sister who had Down syndrome. And so I did my best to fill his shoes as I became their primary caregiver. Um, it was an enormous responsibility, uh, not an endeavor for the faint of heart, for sure. But as the months moved forward and the years moved forward, 
I found that we shared so many beautiful, poignant, and downright humorous moments. And when those moments occurred, I'd say to myself, self, maybe you should be writing about this. But between uh, the hours that my job required and the actual caregiving, I just didn't have time. And I said, you know, writing will have to wait again. Now, by the winter of 2019, I had long left uh, the accounting work behind. I had been uh, working as a freelance uh, Spanish-English interpreter. I had uh, completed my master's in bilingual bicultural studies. And last, but certainly not least, I was newly divorced. <laughs> And it was around that time that one of my friends said to me, you know, when I listen to you tell me a story, I feel like I'm listening to an episode of The Mob. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that struck a chord with me, and I thought, huh, really? Okay, maybe this is something I need to pursue. And so I started listening to podcasts more, and I went to a main stage event in Princeton, and I said, yeah, I think I'm gonna pursue this. Um, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna start in, you know, early 2020. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> we all know what happened in uh, 2020. But I believe firmly that a dream deferred is not necessarily a dream denied. And in 2022, I started to poke around and I found that ah, there's a moth story slam happening in Philadelphia at World Cafe in February. And the theme is love hurts. Well, I have something to say about that <laughs> for sure. And so I said, I'm, I'm in, I'm gonna do this. And I came, put my name in the bag, and I was fortunate enough to be selected that day, my very first uh, attempt. And I've been selected uh, several times after that. And while it's taken me uh, 20 years, <laughs> approximately, to get here, I've decided that with the time that I have left, with what is left over in me, I will continue to write and to tell my stories. And people say, some people say you save the best for last. I say I save the best for now. Thank you.